In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. We thank our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for His infinite love, mercy, and everlasting kindness. To be once again in His holy presence, in His holy church, and sharing His life, His living and life-giving word, the only truth, which is the Holy Bible, the word of the true divine God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and revealed in fullness through Jesus Christ of Nazareth when he became man over 2,000 years ago. We thank the Lord for everyone who is present in this holy church and those who are watching us through live streaming. May the almighty Jesus Christ of Nazareth bless you all, guide you and protect you and deliver you from the snares of the enemy. Amen. If I could ask everyone to stand for the Lord's Prayer, please. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgave our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Psalm number 117. Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Lord Him, all you peoples. For His merciful kindness is great toward us, and the truth of the Lord endures forever. Praise the Lord. And all glory be to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Today is going to be Q&A. Uh, and I'll try, we will try to answer as many questions as possible. Um, and I hope they're not going to be uh, very controversial questions where you put this poor little bishop in a very uncomfortable situation. Is purgatory real? I don't know. For years I've been told that purgatory is real. But I've come across some people who have said it's not and that when we pass on, Jesus will judge us then. Could you please clear this up? All I can say in a nutshell, my beloved, and thank you for your question, purgatory is, um, um, is, a, is, a, is a, a law, a canon law, or, or maybe even a, a dogma in the Catholic Church only. It, the Orthodox world and the Protestants do not believe in purgatory. And when I say orthodoxy, I mean Eastern and Oriental and including the Church of the East where I come from. We do not believe in something called purgatory. But um, it is something that is taught in, the, in our beloved Catholic Church. So if you're a Catholic and you follow uh, your church, then um, I guess respect your church and, and follow the teachings. But I can say one thing. I have to say this. There is nowhere in the entire Holy Bible clearly saying that you're going to go to a place where you will be prayed. They're going to pray for you. Then you'll pay the debt and leave. There is nowhere with clarity in the entire Holy Bible. However, however, there is in the Holy Bible mention of praying for the dead. There is. And this again where it comes a little bit kind of controversial. You see again in the apostolic churches, Catholic, Orthodox, these are apostolic churches. We also accept the second canonical books, the Deutero canonical books, where it's not accepted in the Protestant branch. So in the second canonical books, there is a mention of praying for the dead. All right. So, um, but purgatory, there is no clear mention of it in the entire Holy Bible. We may take a question from here. Before I answer the question, is it hot in here or is it hot? Maybe, yeah. Okay. Okay. What is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? 
Is the kingdom of God referring to our soul? Uh, no. The difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven is the following. Both of them are from heaven. The kingdom of heaven, the title itself is saying to me and all of us, this kingdom came from heaven. And the kingdom of God, and where is God? Our Father who art in heaven. So both of them are from heaven. However, kingdom of heaven came from heaven to earth. And it was established on earth when Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, was crucified on Golgotha, on Calvary, on the cross. The Lord established the kingdom of heaven on earth the day he was crucified. So this kingdom came from heaven, but it is on earth. Reason being, the kingdom of heaven came, so through the Lord Jesus and his salvific plan to bring as many people as possible from the world, from the kingdom of the world, which is ruled by Satan. The kingdom of the world. So the Lord came and established the kingdom of heaven on earth and by grace and by his precious blood, tries to bring as many people out of the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of heaven. Now, who are the kingdom of heaven? The Christian world. Christendom. Every baptized soul in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is the kingdom of heaven. Now, where is the difference between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven? Well, when we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, the Lord is giving a parable about the ten virgins, five wise and five unwise. When we read in the gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 13, when the Lord talks about the tares and the seed of wheat, in the kingdom of heaven, everyone is baptized. But is every baptized soul follows the Lord Jesus? No. There are true followers and there are Christian by name. So the kingdom of heaven has 10 virgins, five wise, five unwise. In the kingdom of God, all of them are wise. The kingdom of God cannot afford to have unwise people there. The kingdom of God, all are the grain of wheat. There is no tares because the tear is planted by the enemy, Satan. The kingdom of God, all of them are saints. The kingdom of heaven, there are sinners. Yes. So the kingdom of heaven is on earth. Those who will make it to heaven they will enter the kingdom of God. Yes? I'll put it this way to you. Everyone went to school. But did everyone who went to school became a doctor? No. But every doctor went to school. Everyone went to school, but not everyone became a doctor. But every doctor went to school. Everyone who's going to end up in the kingdom of God is baptized. But not every baptized will end up in the kingdom of God. Because they chose not to follow the Lord even after receiving the holy baptism and receiving Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. The companion of St. Paul. He was, Jesus was his Lord and Savior and everything and then he... The current of the world took him away. He was not saved. So when somebody comes and says, once saved, always saved, it's not biblical. It's not. You can lose your salvation. Why? Because you still have the will. Why? Because you still have the love of God in you. God created you on the basis of love. And in love there is freedom. With freedom there is choices. With choices there is the will. You still choose. So. Kingdom of God, all saints. Kingdom of heaven, there is sinners. There is wise and unwise in the kingdom of heaven. But in the kingdom of God, there is only wise. 
because God will not accept unwise people to enter his holy presence you with me now yes is that clear how come there's no response <laughs> yeah oh, okay well, yeah. I'm not gonna hold you to it you know you can be free and say yes I I understand or no I don't understand you know what I mean If I do any sin, God will forgive me. If you repent, yes. If you repent. If you don't repent, God will not forgive you. Because it's not God that is not forgiving you. It is you who are shutting the door. So when you commit a crime, you need to come back and say, I'm sorry, Lord. I've sinned against you in heaven. Like the prodigal son. See, the prodigal son in Luke 15, he went away. A far away country. He did everything against his father but one day he came to his senses he woke up after being crushed you know some people will not come to the Lord until the Lord breaks them very profoundly oh yeah the Lord will corner you if you don't give up he's gonna corner you until you raise the white flag and say surrender Lord so you've been doing drugs and the Lord's been saying stop it and you say oh I'm enjoying it mate <laughs> does that sound familiar I'm enjoying it I think it's hard isn't it <laughs> no not after the drugs <laughs> <laughs> naturally I'm hot you know just just kidding not um, so yeah You've been doing whatever wrong under the sun. The Lord has been calling you, calling you, calling you. You're not responding. The Lord, you've left him no choice but to come and corner you. He'll make sure that you're going to lose all those things that have been the reason for you being distant from him. So if it was friends, he'll take them away from you. If it's a job, he will take the job away from you. If it's health, he will take the health away from you. If it's parents, he will, no, he will push them aside. <laughs> Anything and anyone you put before the Lord, the Lord will take that thing and that one away from you because his love for you is zealous. It is a holy jealousy. It's a holy one. It's a holy jealousy. Don't forget the Lord is the heavenly groom. And the church is his beloved bride and the and the groom cannot share his bride with no one else I'll ask you my man would you share your wife with someone else no way in the world no way in the world the Lord will not share his wife his bride with no one so if that one is money he will crush that money if that one is a person he will push that person if that one is Satan he has already stepped on Satan on Calvary whatever it is he will take it away because he is a zealous jealous God because with love there is always jealousy associated with it the day you are no longer jealous you no longer love The day you are not jealous of your partner talking to someone else. Actually, I just remembered this joke. <laughs> this husband calls his wife from work. He said, honey, I just fell at work and I broke my leg and Stephanie took me to the hospital. She said, who is Stephanie? <laughs> Did you get it? She didn't say, oh, how are you? How is the leg? Have have, you, have they put that iron rod in it? No, no, no. Who is Stephanie? I don't care about the leg. I care about Stephanie. <laughs> Jealousy kicks in when there is genuine love. When there is genuine love. So, the Lord is love. He's jealous, but a pure, a holy one. So you walk away from him? No. He'll crush everything and everyone to bring you back. You are the bride. Yes. And we're living in honeymoon, baby. My daughter, 
You may say you love your parents, your mom, your dad, whoever that person is that is the closest ever to your heart. When you get married, would you take your mom to honeymoon with you? Oh, mom, I'll get you a room next door so you can make me scramble eggs in the morning. Anyone tries to come with you on honeymoon, you, you just chop them. <laughs> because that moment is that intimate moment between the man and the woman. No one comes in between. No one. Yeah? This is the Lord. This is the Lord. He wants you for himself. He wants you for himself. And he made a promise to his heavenly father, daddy, that I will not go back empty handed. I will bring the bride with me. You see, you gave me the bride and I will bring the bride to you, dad. I'll bring her into your house, into your home. I made a promise. And when I make a promise, daddy, I never ever back off. So whatever it takes, I'll bring the bride. Even if I crush her and I break her and I smash her, I'll do it. But I will bring the bride to the father's house. And the Lord is good. Don't let him crush you. Trust me. It can be very, very, very painful process. It can be a very painful process. Oops. This just came off from my red belt in karate. Is Jesus two natures, divine and human, uni unified or, or separated? No, my dear, it's unified, united. The divine and the human united in the person of Christ from the moment of conception in the womb of the Holy Mother, the Virgin of all virgins, and until the cross, burial, resurrection, and forever and ever and ever and ever, 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 more, 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 more. Humanity and, and divinity united in one person called Christ. Never separated. Never. And if anybody says they were separated, then that is not a biblical teaching. Not. God knows our thoughts and what's in our hearts. Does Satan also know our thoughts, i.e., can he... Um, can he read our minds and does he know what is in our hearts? To a certain degree, yes, but not everything. The only one who knows everything is God. Satan compared to the Lord Jesus he is extremely limited he can read certain thoughts he can read certain waves only when the Lord permits him and also when we also permit Satan yes so but the Lord has put a limit a boundary to Satan he does not know all things he does not know everything that's why he's extremely finite, he's very limited. And this is why the Lord can really play with Satan and he won't even know what hit him. However, Satan's knowledge compared to ours is very, very huge. We don't know much, he knows a lot compared to us. But compared to the Lord, he knows nothing really. He's very weak. So yeah, Satan doesn't know every thought. And this is why you need to be strong, trusting the Lord that you are in good, capable hands, the hands of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't ever fear. Don't ever fear nothing. Oh my goodness.
Yeah, this is for me. Uh, and I need you to pray for this person. Um, I need you to pray for this person. Um, as humans, we're sinners. What's this all about sin, eh? Uh, as, you, as humans, we're sinners and can't stop sinning. I was taught in school, if I did in a, if I die in a state of mortal sin, I'll go to hell. If that's the case, we will all go to hell. <laughs> so how do I make it to heaven? I ask for forgiveness every day, but I still sin daily. Okay. Well, you've been taught in school if you if you die in a state of mortal sin you'll go to hell. Well, to somewhat degree that is correct. If it's a mortal sin and you die doing that, definitely very hard to make it to heaven, <laughs> you're going to go to hell. But this is why the Lord Jesus came. Because the Lord knew everyone was going to hell. From the first Adam to the last human being that comes to the face of this planet. Every human being would have ended up in hell if it wasn't for the Lord Jesus. The Lord came, He paid the price on our behalf. He took our sins upon Himself, nailed it on the cross and died on our behalf. He paid the price and said, whoever accepts the Lord by the grace of God, by the mercy of the Lord, by the precious blood which He shed on Calvary on the cross, you will be saved if you ask for forgiveness. You just told me here that you ask for forgiveness every day and you sin every day. Well, let me put it this way and I pray this is going to help you to boost your morales and give you a bit of a hope that you are not condemned to hell if you have the Lord Jesus you have the grace of God of salvation and redemption well I'll put it this way the day that comes any one of us that does not sin we become like God the only one who does not sin is God humans as long as they live in the flesh they are susceptible to making mistakes and if you are trying your hardest, my beloved, not to sin, then you are approaching it wrongly altogether. You're wasting your time, your energy, your breath on achieving something that is unachievable by you. You cannot stop sinning. Because if you don't sin at all, you're like God. That day will never come. So what did the Lord Jesus do? Knowing beforehand that the human race is incapable of not sinning, He came and He said, accept me as your Lord and Savior. And every time you, show, you fall short, I will complete what is lacking. You see, my father says, you need to enter my exam. God says, you need to enter my exam. And in order to make it to my heaven, you need to get a hundred out of a hundred. No one can do it. So I entered the exam and the best I could have achieved was 10 out of a hundred. If you ask the Lord's help, he'll come and add the other 90 on top of your 10. And he'll say to his dad, daddy, your child got a hundred out of a hundred. That's called grace. That's called mercy. But there's one thing, my dear. If you're asking for forgiveness every day and you are sinning deliberately every day, you're asking for forgiveness, the Lord will not hear. If you come in here and say, Lord, forgive me, and you are going out knowing, knowing for sure you're going out to do something wrong deliberately, the Lord cannot help you. But if you are sinning, indirectly you haven't planned for it 
you haven't plotted for it and you went out hoping that you'll be fine and something comes out of nowhere and makes you fall you go back and ask for forgiveness the Lord will forgive you but if you go out deliberately doing something wrong knowing that this is wrong in the sight of God yet knowing this and you're still doing it how can the Lord forgive you impossible you need to ask for repentance from the heart and you need to mean it and you need to do your best by the grace of God not to make a mistake but if the mistake comes with no intention behind it prior intention then the Lord will forgive you when you come back and say sorry Lord but if you're doing it deliberately then what are you asking for it just we are just deceiving ourselves like I'm coming to the Lord Lord I'm really sorry I'm a sinner but my friends are waiting for me I have to go Lord thank you so much doesn't work so when you go out your friends call you don't go so you don't go with your friends that teach you to do the wrong things you didn't go that's good so you went another direction something happened and you lost it that that was not intentional come back and say Lord I'm sorry he will forgive you amen but by doing it deliberate it doesn't work it doesn't work my dear friend How do you let go of someone you love truly but doesn't have your heart? What does that mean? You guys can understand this language? Huh? Doesn't love you. Ah, oh, doesn't. Ah, oh, sorry, Laya. It's the glasses. How do you let go of someone you love truly but doesn't love you? I think you need to make an appointment. <laughs> and this appointment will have to be outside the church premises. <laughs> um, a nice dinner will do me fine, you know, somewhere uh, very nice, somewhere uh, maybe McDonald's. <laughs> Just kidding. How do you let go of someone that you love but they don't love you? It is the most painful thing is a one-way street love. The most painful. Well, they, they love, you love them but they don't love you. I'll bring you another one from the Middle East, don't worry. Ah, <sighs> uh, what do we do with this love? It's so painful. Hmm? As they say, love is blind. Yeah? So, let me tell you this, my dear friend. Looks like you are not married to this person. I hope you're not. <laughs> I hope. I have seen so many young men and women dying to marry this person. So a guy comes, he is shredded to pieces. The other day someone came crying, a boy, a young man, young man, crying, wants to get married and it's not working. There is a lot of obstacles in the way. And he broke my heart. Honestly, he broke my heart. He put tears in my eyes. I prayed for him, for the Lord to do something about it. But you know what? It's funny, we try to do everything possible and impossible just to get this person and marry this person. We married that person. After one year, five, ten years, I cannot stand the very person whom I was dying just to get married to. 
It's a secret. So let me tell you, my dear friend, about marriage. Even though it's a very deep topic, we'll have to do a session specifically about marriage. Let me tell you one thing. Prior to marriage, everything is beautiful, everything is funny, everything is colorful. After marriage, all hell breaks loose. You see, prior to marriage, let's say you are at the very early, I call the Rosella stage, getting to know each other, the Rosella stage. Choo, 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 choo. It's all lovey-dovey talk. Hello, honey. Hello, Habibi. I love you. I, I, I die for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's all love talk. Let's say you're sitting with your, with your fiance. And your fiance, the man, you're sitting with a group of people and he says a joke. And you laugh. The others didn't laugh. But you laughed, why? Because my sweetheart said it. It's his joke. I love him. Everything is so cool coming from him. It's funny. So you laugh, my dear daughter. After marriage, he says the same joke. You nail him on the wall. <laughs> so let me tell you this. If this Juliet does not happen to be your partner in crime, uh, in marriage, then there is another Juliet. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. But I'll tell you, you cannot stand a relationship that is one way. It's impossible. You see, love, true love that comes from the heart, genuine love, can only exist when it's a two-way street, not a one-way street. When it's one way, it's a selfish love. And it's a painful love. So my advice to you, how can you let go? Yeah, I know. I know the feeling, brother. Oh, my daughter. How can you let go? Pray, ask the Lord to help you let go. Pray, ask the Lord to help you let go. Because the more you stay in this kind of an environment, you will never progress, you'll start going backwards. You will hurt yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, you will destroy yourself. Because love is extremely powerful. Love is the supreme ethic. It's the foundation to everything. God is love. So the ultimate is love. And that's why love is so beautiful, but at the same time is so painful. So if it's a one-way street, and you are certain of this, then walk away. Even if you get broken badly you'd rather get broken now for a short time and not be broken for the rest of your life after marriage because if you're not married and you walk away it's a lot easier than being married and walking away and especially when there are children involved because now you are not just responsible for yourself you're responsible for the entire family including the kids who will definitely suffer the most suffer the most so, if you're not married, thank God. <laughs> Say, hallelujah, I'm not married. <laughs> Just walk away. I'll get you another uh, Elizabeth or whatever you want. We'll make a phone call, don't worry. But, if you are that deeply attached, then I would recommend this if you haven't done it yet. Put your name and the person you love so much on a piece of paper and give it to the priest go to the church and give it to the priest and ask the priest to put it on the altar and pray for this intention what is the will of the Lord Jesus for me and this person pray put it on the altar and see what the Lord is gonna do 
If it's meant to be, you'll see the person changing and coming back to you. If it's not meant to be, it will get worse and they will walk away from you. So that's a sign from the Lord. Then if it is, then walk away. That's it. Very simple. What do you do? You can handle it. Don't worry. The Lord will heal you. This is why for those who are still very young and they haven't entered such a relationship, please, my sons and daughters, young teenagers, boys and girls, my beloved sons and daughters, don't ever think it is fun not to have, I've got a boyfriend, I've got a girlfriend, and they're boasting about it. That's not fun. But I look odd, everybody's got a partner except me. I need to have one. Excuse me? What are you buying some sort of a, a product? This is not a joke. A relationship as such can have enormous impact on your life if it is not healthy. Enormous. People have, have dived into extremely deep depression. It's not a joke. But you're still very young. So it's fun. We went out, we ate, we drank, we chat, and we laughed, and we did. It's not fun. I remember this girl came running to me one day, 16 years of age, beautiful young girl, 16 years of age, came running, father, father, crying her eyes out. What's wrong, daughter? My boyfriend just left me. How long have you been together? Four years, father. I'm not good at mathematics. 16 minus 1, 15. Minus another one, 14. Minus another one, 13. Minus another one, 12. So you've known this boy at the age of 12. He was drinking milk in a dummy. Of course he'll leave you because he's another kid. Let me tell you this psychological fact a person changes their mind like the weather every single day when, until they reach the age of 18 that's the first stop before the before the age of 18 there's no brakes the motor is running the car is running there is no brakes one day they will wake up and say i want a bicycle the other one is i want a motorcycle i want a car i want this i want versace i want le, 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 le. i don't know what else I want Chanel, I want this, I want holidays. And the ultimate, what do you want? I don't know. I don't know. This is the teenage life. Every day they are in a different mood swing. When they hit 18, slows down a bit. But there are still changes. You know when you really slow down? When you hit 50. <laughs> Or when you feel like you're 50, even though you're not 50. <laughs> so my beloveds, be careful, be careful, be careful. Entering a relationship as such between boy and a girl at a very early age, because you will hurt yourself. It's not a, it's not a joke, it's not fun. Does the Holy Spirit proceed from the Son? Uh, yeah, uh, it, and the Nicene Creed, if you're referring to the Nicene Creed, uh, the original, the original text proceeds from the Father, not the Son. Yeah? Because the word proceed is not like exit. Exit, to exit a place, that means you leave that place totally and completely. Proceeding from a place, you leave the place, but you are still in it. You haven't left it, you just came out of it, but you're still there. So if the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, then there is two gods. But if the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father only, which is the original text of the Nicene Creed. The original text of the Nicene Creed in a nutshell, my dear. Why is there different accounts of Jesus uh, rising from the dead, from the tomb? Different accounts? Hmm? Different accounts, what do you, I don't know, what do you mean exactly by different accounts? You mean like it's written differently in the Gospels? 
Like you read one gospel says one thing and the other one says another thing and the other one says another thing. We'll do a topic just on that. Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's perfect. If that's what you mean. If that's what you mean, then we'll do a lecture on that and we'll explain why when you read in, the Ma in Matthew and the other ones, everyone is telling you a different story. It's not a different story. It's the, it's the perfect, complete story of the account of the resurrection of the Messiah. So it's a perfect picture when you put them together. Oh my goodness. Let me see. No, I think I'll leave this for them for later. Oh how do you help your child who has experienced childhood trauma, who comes in and out of their faith? How do you help the parents who have so much hate for the perpetrator? Why do people harm children? Uh, it's a million dollar question. Why do people harm children? It's very sad and very sick. There are two kind of people I cannot see crying. It breaks me to smithereens. An old aged person and a little child. Because both of them are helpless. They are in need of someone else's help. Someone is an elderly and gets abused. If I see the abuser, I'll bury them with my hands. And if I see someone abusing a little child, I will put him through a shredder. My blood boils up. May the Lord have mercy on me. But my blood boils up when somebody abuses an elderly and a child. These two are untouchable areas. You cannot. Period. You cannot. So they abuse children and there is a scar for the rest of their life. And obviously the parents, when they see the person who was the reason for their child's current situation, how are they going to forgive that person? It's very hard. It's very hard. We need to pray for the child and the parents, my dear friend. Pray and ask the Lord Jesus to touch their hearts because only God can really comfort their troubled heart and give them the strength to forgive the one who has hurt them and their child the most. Takes God. So ask the Lord for healing for the child and the parents. And if you'd like to give us their names privately, confidential, I'll be more than happy to see you. Or you can come and see me afterwards and give me their names and we will pray for them, you know, without anyone knowing except the Lord Jesus. This question is for me. <laughs> I know this is a personal question, but would you be able to talk about your um, relationship with your earthly mother and her experiences with Christ? Oh. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I can. I still miss her. It was a long time we lived together. She was a wonderful lady. And, a, and an, an awesome mother. She was an uh, absolutely uh, um, devout Christian and very faithful and loyal to her family, uh, to her husband um, also who was departed as well. This so happens to be my earthly father. Um, and uh, she taught us and uh, raised us in the love of Christ. I remember, uh, this I will say, when I was a little kid, um, we are five siblings. I'm the youngest, but I look the oldest. So I'm the youngest, 
Um, uh, we're five brothers, no sisters. Uh, so when uh, every Saturday evening, my sweetheart, my holy, mo uh, my my earthly mother, she would come and gather us all, and uh, she would grab her holy Bible which she brought with her from Iraq to Australia. She left everything behind except her Holy Bible, the cross, and an icon of the Lord Jesus, a very small one. She adored the Holy Mother to death. And she raised us in the love of the Lord Jesus and his Holy Mom. So every Saturday evening, she would gather all her children. And I happen to be the youngest one of all. And she would bring her Holy Bible and the Holy Bible. I still have it at, at home with me. It is in Armenian. It is the Armenian language because my mother was fluent in Armenian reading, writing. You would never tell this is an Assyrian person when she spoke Armenian. She would blow my mind away. Even Armenians, when they hear, hear her, they think she's an Armenian. And then to their shocking surprise, knowing the is an Assyrian descent, they said impossible. For you to know this much Armenian, this fluent in Armenian, amazing. So her Bible was in Armenian. So she would open the Holy Bible every Saturday evening without fail. Yet she had a lot of work responsibilities on her shoulders. And she would read and then translate that into Assyrian and then explain as much as she could, as much as she knew. And always said, Jesus is the only one. Jesus is the only way. Let me tell you, share with you. It's okay. Looks like the Lord wants me to share something. Now, my earthly mother, Ad the mother, amazing. Are you tired? Come on, come on, be honest. Um, I work all day every Sunday um, Sunday isn't it supposed to be a holy and quiet day I guess but I go straight to church in the Sunday afternoon am I doing okay for God by working all day on Sunday but you are going to church yes if you're going to church in the afternoon then you are doing okay well, maybe you need to work on Sunday. I don't know what your situation is. Maybe um, the workplace or with wherever you're working, they are uh, forcing you to work on Sunday. Maybe you have no other choice. If you have a choice, then maybe ask them to relieve you from working on Sunday. But if it's a must and you have to go to work and you rely on that job to provide, then it's okay. The Lord is merciful. But even though you're working and you're still making it to church in the afternoon, well, thumbs up. Well done. The Lord is very happy. God bless you. Oh, now. There was this controversial topic. that I asked the people before going live. Shall we talk about it? Majority put their hand up saying yes. A few people put their hand up and said no. They say majority rules, eh? Majority rules. May the Lord have mercy. May the Lord have mercy on all of us. Even though this topic is already everywhere on social media platforms, so I'm not neither the first nor the last to talk about this, but I pray that I approach this in somewhat 
slightly different to the way it has been approached maybe so far and that is what was approved by the Vatican and signed off by Pope Francis in recent times about concerning the LGBT providing a blessing for those who are in this kind of a lifestyle um, I won't dwell on it that much but one of the reasons one of the main reasons why we are talking about it now is we have seen in person young Christian Catholics coming to us saying what shall we do do we leave the church or do we stay I will never ever encourage anyone to leave their church never because it's not nice to take people from other flock who are already Christians and bring them to another flock that is Christian as well what have we achieved but we can only advise them and we always ask them to pray and stay calm stay put trust in the Lord because the Lord always comes and pulls it through and pulls it together has there been church leaders that were disobedient to the Lord Jesus in the past always is it something new no remember at the time of the Lord Jesus the high priest Caiaphas he said crucify him he cried out to the public and said crucify this man this man we don't want him to be king over us we want Caesar Caesar who was a vampire sucking their blood stepping on them enslaving them they preferred the one who enslaved the Israelites over the one who came to set them free once and for all amazing and who encouraged people to be to fume up and go and crucify the Lord Jesus the high priest and the high priest of the Old Testament of the old time is the Pope the patriarch or the church leader of the New Testament same thing Sorry, no problem. All right, let's stand for the finale prayer, please. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light where there is sadness, joy, O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, it is in dying that we are born again to eternal life. Amen. May the Lord Jesus bless you, guide you and protect you all the days of your life, now and forevermore. Amen. God bless. Go in peace. The peace of Christ be with you always.